Hey everybody, Toby Grindberg here and welcome to The Sugar Sweet. And on today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to make the most perfect and moist lemon cake with lemon buttercream frosting. If you guys have troubles at home with making cakes and they always end up all, you know, dried out or end up overcooked or nice and brown on the outside and doughy in the middle, well, through this tutorial, I'm gonna help you guys solve all of those problems. And I'm gonna show you a super cool trick to make your cakes come out even more moist with the extra lift with the perfect crumb. You'll be able to find the recipe for today's recipe in the description box. Please follow me on social media and subscribe. I have a 1,000 subscriber giveaway coming very soon. Please help me reach 1,000 subscribers. And if you need to contact me for business purposes, you can find that information in the description box. First thing I'm gonna do is cream together my butter and sugar. And I'm using salted butter, so I won't be using salt in my recipe. But if you're going to be using unsalted butter, you would need to add one and a half teaspoons of regular salt. So my butter's at room temperature. We're going to cream this together. Once this starts to come together, we're going to cream it together for exactly eight minutes on medium high speed. So medium high speed, eight minutes. Now I have here my egg whites that are at room temperature. So while my butter and sugar is creaming together, I'm going to go ahead and begin to beat my egg whites. And I'm using a balloon whisk. When you beat your egg whites, you need to make sure that your bowl is very clean and dry. If there's any bits of other type of fat content, your egg whites are not going to beat up properly. Now my egg whites are beginning to get frothy. So now that they're beginning to get frothy, as you see here, I'm gonna add just a pinch of cream of tartar. And this helps stabilize this, the whipping of the egg whites. So we're gonna beat these until they're at stiff peaks. So I've been beating these egg whites for about five minutes and it's almost at stiff peaks. So we are at stiff peak stage. I believe we're at stiff peaks. So it's holding the stiff peak. So I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna be working very quickly. So here in my sifter, I'm gonna add my cake flour and I'm gonna do this with wax paper because this just makes it easier to add in the end. If you're using salt, because you're not using, because you're using unsalted butter, you would add the salt at this point too. But because I'm using salted butter, there's no salt and that's the baking powder. And I'm just going to sift the two together. What this does is lightens the cake flour so your cake doesn't come out so heavy in the end. So it's very important to sift. So I'm pushing all that lumps. Now we're going to go over to our mixer. So the butter and sugar has creamed together for eight minutes. And I did stop, stop the machine and scrape it down in between just to, you know, make sure it was mixing correctly. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to the machine back on. I have here four egg yolks. Now if your egg yolks become separated, that's okay. Just add it a little bit at a time. We're gonna add one egg yolk at a time. Beating after each addition. If you don't beat it very well after each addition, what's gonna happen is when you go to add the milk and the other liquids, it's going to separate and it's gonna curdle. And I'm using farm fresh eggs. Then stop the machine and give it a scrape. And then at this point, I'm going to add my lemon zest. So I have the, the zest here of two lemons. Now what I'm going to do is stop the machine, 
and then our flour that we sifted on top of that parchment we're going to add half of that flour and we're always going to start and end with the, the dry ingredients so we'll add half of the flour and just mix until it's just beginning to come together and then at this point on low speed I'm going to add lemon juice half of the buttermilk mixture and vanilla extract Then after adding half of that, we're going to add half of the remaining flour. That's half of the remaining flour there going in. And then I'm going to stop the machine. I'm going to add the remaining buttermilk. And then I'm going to add the remaining flour. And when I add the remaining flour, I'm just going to mix it until I see the flour is just dissolved, but it's not going to be completely mixed in. Okay, so that's good. It's not going to be completely mixed in. So I have here the egg whites that we whipped and I'm just going to add half of those egg whites. What this does is it gives it extra leavening and everything is going to rise properly. And once almost all the egg whites is folded in, we're going to add some more. So it's almost completely folded in and half of the remaining egg whites. And just fold. And just taking everything from the outside and folding it in, sort of like J shape. Like right in the letter J. And just gently fold it. And once all this egg white is almost completely folded in, we're going to fold in the remaining egg white. Fold everything in. And don't worry if there's still a little bit of egg whites visible. It's still going to give us a little pockets of air to help rise this cake. And it's going to be nice and light and moist. So now I'm just going to fill my cupcake lined tin with even amounts of cake batter and I'm using a cake scoop for regular sized cupcakes. My oven is preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and once I fill all these, these are going to bake for 15 to 18 minutes. We're not going to tap the, the cupcakes tin because we don't want to knock the air out so if you need it to be smooth you need to smooth it out with a spoon but don't worry about any air that's in here so I'm going to bake these once I fill up my cup so I'm going to start with two sticks of butter that are room temperature and I'm just going to beat them a little bit just to kind of break them down and then I'm going to begin to add my powder sugar I'm using between four and a half to five cups four and a half to five and a half cups. It really depends on the consistency. But I'm not going to be using about four and a half. So I'm going to add one cup of that confectioner sugar. 
to the mixer. And once it's all dissolved, I'm going to increase the speed. And I'm just going to allow this to mix for a moment or two. Okay. So I'm going to add the second cup of sugar. And I did sift the powdered sugar. And the butter that I'm using is salted because people often complain that buttercream is too sweet, so the salt gives it a little bit of balance. So I'm going to add to this my, this is a juice of one lemon. I'm just going to add it early on in advance. Now as the sugar is being added, we're going to just gradually add more and more. And I'm going to add the next cup. And then I'm going to add some vanilla flavoring to this. This is pure vanilla extract. And then I have the zest from one lemon. And if you don't want to use the zest of the lemon, you can use lemon extract. Now I'm going to add the next cup of sugar, which will be the fourth cup. Now this part is totally up to you. I'm going to add some more lemon juice, but I'm using this bottled lemon juice by Cocktail Artist. I'm going to add about two to three tablespoons. I'm going to whip this on high. I'm going to whip this on high speed for about two or three minutes. And what's going to happen is it's going to become white in color because we're incorporating air in this. It's going to become very white. So this has been creaming together for about three minutes. So what I'm going to do is just look at it and I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to scrape down my bowl here. And if I feel that it's a little bit too runny or if it's too stiff, then I'll adjust it from there. If it's too runny, add more powdered sugar. If it's too stiff, just add a couple more tablespoons of lemon juice or you can add a couple tablespoons of milk. So I want my buttercream just to be a little bit more stiffer, so I'm going to add about half a cup more of powdered sugar. It's going to be, but this totally depends on your environment as well. So after I add this, I'm going to let it whip together for another minute or two, just to make sure everything is well incorporated. I'm going to stop here and scrape down any raw bits of powdered sugar that's at the top of my bowl and then I'm going to allow it to finish creaming. Now if you want to add food coloring so I'm using Wilton and this is gel color called yellow buttercup Give it just enough to give it a nice yellow color. Some beautiful yellow buttercup color. Just gonna scrape everything and make sure all that color is being incorporated. And then we're gonna put this inside of our pastry bag. I'm using Wilton tip number 2D and I'm just going to do a simple, just a little swirl on top, that easy. So 
So I'm going to finish all my cupcakes. And then I have here, this is called Wilton Edible Glitter Spray. And I'm going to hold this at a good distance. You're not going to be able to see the effect until I give you close-ups. But, and just simply just spray. So here is our cupcakes. And I garnished it with the glitter spray and a lemon. So I have another one here off the side. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to break it in half. So you can see the inside. And as you can see, it's not dry. It's a beautiful moist crumb. It's very soft. And you can see the lemon zest in it. I don't know if you can really see that because of the lighting, but so I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. Mm. It's lemony. It's buttery. It's moist. Um, if you decide not to bake this as a cupcake, if you're gonna bake this in a regular pan, like an eight-inch or nine-inch pan. Um, you need to bake it at 325 degree Fahrenheit and you need to give it time to rise before you open the oven. So key thumb of rule, let it bake for about 45 minutes before you open the door. And the reason why you bake that in a lower temp is because it's in a bigger pan and the heat has to hit the batter properly. And as the batter rises at a slow rate, it gives it time to cook on the inside. So that way you won't have a cake that is going to be dry and dense. You'll have a nice cake that's um, moist. Also, um, doing that prevents you from having a cake that looks cooked on the outside. It looks beautiful and brown, but when you go to slice it, it's all doughy in the middle. That prevents it as well. So 354 cupcake pins, 325 for any other size. So I hope you guys try this recipe. Please add it to your playlist. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. If you have a request, anything baking, yeast, or whatever, leave that in the comment section, and I will definitely work on that recipe. Thank you so much for watching The Sugary Sweet, where we're making the world a little sweeter.